This is Lesson 99 of Saxon Algebra 1. This lesson is called Uniform Motion and Unequal Distances. This is our third type of uniform motion problems. They're called uniform motion because the people go at 50 miles per hour or whatever they give you the entire time. So that's why they're called uniform motion. I'm just going to quickly review the different types of uh, uniform motion problems we've done so far this year. So um, this is our first time where we had kind, we had distance one equals distance two. They're either going someplace and then coming back or two people are leaving from the same place and ending up in the same place. So that's the first kind, equal distance. Then we have the kind the, where things crash, where something comes from one distance and something comes from the other direction and they meet somewhere in between and we have those kind of distance one plus distance two equals a given distance apart. Actually there's three types for this one. Um, you can have where they run this far and then maybe walk that far and the total distance is n. Or you can have the kind where they come, um, they start in the center and go the opposite direction a certain amount of, of distance. The type we're going to do today are called unequal distances where we have um, a person starts at one place and ends and the other one gets ahead of them at a certain amount of time. So um, there's more than one way to do that problem as well. There's also where someone was going to start out ahead and catch up. The other person's going to catch up with them. So um, all of these problems are similar in that we're going to take, once we set them up, we're going to take and we would we'd say distance equals rate times time like this. So you set the distances equal and then, then I always say you expand them. And we're going to do the same with this type. We're going to say distance one would be rate one time one plus a given distance, which would be n. There's something really funny on my screen I can't get past. Um, n equals don't know what this is going on here. Um, we're having trouble when I hit over here, so I'm not going to be right on this part of my screen. All right, so let's just try a problem. This would be rate. Yeah, it won't let me write here. Okay, don't know what that is, but let's see if I can leave it somewhere else. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my screen. All right, so let's uh, go down to our first example if this will let me. I guess since I haven't done these for a while, they're, I'm not able to do them right. Okay, there we go. So at example one, at 8 p.m., Achilles left camp and headed south at 20 miles per hour. So we're going to draw our little picture. Um, we have a starting point, and at 8 a.m., Achilles left camp and headed south at 20 kilometers per hour. So here we go. They're going to end up somewhere, so I'll just put that line out there. Um, we have the rate of Achilles. I'm going to write things down as I see them. The rate of, the, of Achilles it says it's 20 kilometers per hour. At 10 p.m., Patroclus headed south from the same camp. If Patroclus was 50 kilometers ahead by 3 a.m., what was his speed? So the rate of Patroclus is what we don't know. So we're going to put that as question mark. So Achilles is leaving camp, um, but it looks like this is the distance of Achilles because it looks like Patroclus is going to end up 50 kilometers ahead. So this is the distance of Patroclus, however you say that. And he ends up 50 kilometers ahead. So you can see they're unequal distances but you need to add 50 onto Achilles so that the distances actually are equal. So when we set this up, we're going to say the distance of Achilles plus 50 equals the distance of Patroclus. And that's how you're going to set up these unequal distance problems. Now we need to find out time. It says that 8 p.m. Achilles left and at 10 p.m. Patrick left. The whole thing ends at 3 a.m. 
So here's our 3 a.m. So, um, so the time of Achilles is going to be um, seven hours. If you go from eight to three, you're going to get seven. And the time of Patroclus is two hours less because he's leaving two hours later, but he must be really fast because he passed up Achilles by a lot there. So um, his time is five hours. All right, now we're going to do our little expansion. We're going to say rate Achilles, time Achilles, plus 50 equals rate Patroclus, time Patroclus. And we're just going to substitute it in. Rate Achilles is 20, time Achilles is 7, plus 50 equals rate Patrick. That's what we don't know, but we know the time of Patrick is 5, so I'm going to put my coefficient in front of our rate of Patrick close. These end up being fairly easy problems. Um, so we're going to get 140, once you know how to set it up, plus 50 equals 5 rate of Patrick close. And we're going to get um, 190 equals 5 rate of Patrick close. And finally we get the rate of Patrick close equals 38 kilometers per hour. So um, you can see the rate, make sure these things make sense at the end of the day. If you get something less than 20, uh, you probably made a mistake because he's obviously faster. The rate of Patrick close ends up being 38 kilometers per hour. These, I haven't seen any yet where they turn out to be decimals. So if you don't, if you get a decimal, you probably did something wrong as well. Let's try another example. All right, I'm having the same problem with my cursor over here. Hopefully you guys can see it all. Um, example two, Rachel has a 15 kilometer head start on Charlene. How long will it take Charlene to catch Rachel if Rachel travels at 70 kilometers per hour and Charlene travels at 100 kilometers per hour? All right, again, the setup is the most difficult part of this. So we do our two distances. And this time Rachel is getting a 15 kilometer head start. So we're gonna add 15. And then we're gonna have our distance of, Char of um, Rachel because she gets a 15 mile head start. Then we have our distance of Charlene. She does not get a head start. So she starts at the starting line. And um, we know that Let's see, how long will it take Charlene to catch Rachel if Rachel, so the rate of Rachel is going to equal 70 and the rate of Charlotte, I don't know what they're riding in. I guess they're not running. It must be like race car riders or something. Um, rate of Charlotte is 100. Now, these, are, these will pretty much happen where the times are the same. Um, because she's starting out 15 kilometers ahead, but they're gonna end at the same time. So they're starting at different places, but they're gonna end at the same time. They're gonna start at the same time, they're gonna end at the same time. So the time of Rachel is going to equal the time of Charlotte. So let's set up our uh, equation. So distance of Rachel plus 15 is going to equal our distance of Charlotte. So these are unequal distances, so you always have to add some sort of distance on. So I'm going to expand it. Rate of Rachel, time of Rachel, plus 15 equals rate of Charlotte, time of Charlotte. Now remember when I told you when the times are the same, you can just drop the subscript, or you can make them both T sub R or both T sub C. So I'm just going to put a T in because they're exactly the same. So let's just fill our things in. Rachel, rate of Rachel is 70 T plus 15. Rate of Charlotte is 100 and we'll say T. I'm going to subtract 70 from both sides. So we're going to get 30 on this side. And we'll still have our 15 over here. 
And so I just said there's no fractions, and here's a fraction. So if I divide both sides by 30, we get the time. The time is 1 half, which is 1 half of an hour. So that is what they're asking for. They're saying um, the question says how long. Well, it's going to take a half an hour for her to, to, um, to catch Rachel. That's where they end up the same time. This is where they hit a time where they're both at the same place. So this one is time is a half an hour. All right, last example. Harry and, Harry and Jeanette jog around a circu circular track that's 210 meters long. Jeanette's rate, rate is 230 meters per minute, while Harry's rate is only 200 meters per minute. Hmm. In how many minutes will Jeanette be a full lap ahead? Now, we're not going to draw a circular track for this because you know I can't draw circles, but uh, we're just going to straighten it all out. And whenever you get these circular track things, you're going to straighten them out just like we do all the other problems. So we have here and we have here. So um, Jeanette's rate is 230. So when is she going to be? So here we go. This is the distance of Jeanette. She's going to go the whole way. She's going to go a lap ahead of Harry here. So this is distance Jeanette. And Harry is going to go, she, he's going to be a full lap behind. And it says the lap, a track is 210 meters. So we're going to put the 210. This is the whole second lap. So she's going to get a whole lap ahead. So that would be 210. I think these are the hardest ones of the three types. So this is the distance of Harry. So she, when is she going to be 210 miles ahead, 210 meters ahead of him? That's what we're trying to figure out, which would be one time around the track. So we're straightening our track out. So once you get this set up, it shouldn't be so hard. Let's see, we have some things. Jeanette's rate, rate of Jeanette is 230. Rate of Harry equals 200. And again, it's the same thing. When is she going to be? The, they're both going to be running for the same amount of time. So the time of Harry is going to equal the time of Jeanette. So we're just going to drop the subscripts when we go to do this problem. So we're going to get distance of Jeanette equals the distance of Harry, but she's going 210 more. One more, one more lap is 210 meters. Expand this out. Rate of Jeanette, time of Jeanette equals rate of Harry, time of Harry, plus 210. Substitute it in, rate of Jeanette is going to be 230, and we're just going to use the T because their times are the same. Rate of Harry is 200, times are the same, plus 210. I'm going to subtract 200 from 230 and get 30, equals 210. And, whoops, yeah. And we're going to divide both sides by 30, and we're going to get the time equals 7 minutes. So she can run um, pretty fast. All right, so that's all you do for those. The hardest part, I would say, is the setup right there. Um, give it a try. If you have any questions, just email me. Um, this is the little hint thing is it's thundering outside. So that's kind of interesting. So you can let me know that in class and I will give you extra credit on your test. All right, that's it for lesson 99.